Hello peeps, welcome back to Big Deck Player with me, Matt Sparks. This week we are taking a look at a paladin deck called a Secreted Inn. And here we are, this is the deck list for the Secreted Inn. It's not an easy word to say, particularly. <laughs> So this is it. Uh, it's a pretty cool deck. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, I found that Paladins have been a little stale recently. Um, so the introduction of some new cards from uh, Goblins vs Gnomes was uh, much needed. So let's take a look at the list from top to bottom. We start off with some secrets. We have two Avenge. These are very good secrets indeed. So when one of your minions dies, it gives a random friendly minion plus three plus two so it's probably best to only have like two things on the board at a time when provided you want something specific buffed it's probably best to only have two on the board that way when one of them dies the other one's going to get buffed and vice versa uh, if you have three or four minions on the board then there might be something that's not so strong that you don't really want to get buffed that might get buffed so play these cautiously and decide when's best to use them and then we have two more secrets in the form of redemption so when one of your minions dies return it to life with one health now this can be really useful on all sorts of different things uh, in this deck and uh, we shall have a look at some of those now we have two argent squires now there's lots of people that would argue that Argent Squire isn't a very good one drop and some would say that there are better one drops but for the purpose of this deck I think it works quite well. So this could work quite well with Redemption because obviously it's got Divine Shield. Now it only has one health anyway uh, so it's not a major disappointment if it comes back to life with one health but it gets that Divine Shield back again which means uh, this can be quite a lot of value. We have two Mad Scientists for getting your secrets into play in the first place. Now, when you're picking your cards at the beginning, I would suggest that you mulligan for Mad Scientists and ditch any uh, secrets that you have. Because obviously, if you can use your Mad Scientist to get your secrets, it's probably a uh, better value than having to actually play them yourself. I like trying to get these guys out as soon as possible. We have two Shielded Minibots, also for two mana. These are great, especially, again, with the Redemption and the Avenge. With an Avenge on them, they can become a 5-4, which is amazing. And with a Divine Shield as well, it's like, ugh, so good. So, yeah, getting some of the spells early can be really useful. Getting them later on can be useful too, but I especially like getting them early for that early game pressure. Because sometimes, early on, your opponents don't really have much in the way of answers when you you'll start hitting them with creatures that have got like four or five attacks so it's pretty useful one cog hammer try and get this in your mulligan in your opening hand if you can because it's fantastic uh, for early games it does only have two attack which is not all that great because some things you want three attack for to get rid of but you know you, beggars can't be choosers but the fact that it gives friendly minion divine shield and taunt so you might have a shielded mini bot out you use it to attack something, the Divine Shield goes, then you can Cog Hammer and you might get that shield back again. Admittedly, he does have Taunt then, but you get that Divine Shield back again, which means extra value from your minions. Awesome card. We have one Divine Favor, because there's not a huge amount of card draw in this deck. Uh, there's this, and which is great against like hand locks and stuff. Fantastic. Uh, and then there's this, the Acolyte of Pain. Again, if you can combo this with either of the spells, either of your secrets, uh, this can be potentially great value. Um, getting an Avenge uh, on the Acolyte of Pain makes it a 4-6, which means lots of potential card draw, which is great. And obviously, if it comes back to life with one health, then that's an extra card you're going to get. So that's not too bad either. We have two Aldor Peacekeepers because sometimes you just need to limit the amount of damage that things are taking. Plus, if you change an enemy's uh, attacks to one, it means if you've got an Acolyte of Pain out, then that Acolyte of Pain can get more card draw from it, which is uh, really, really useful. Two True Silver Champions, because what would a Paladin deck be without a True Silver Champion? Or two, in this case. Uh, really great card. Four attack, restores two health. Fantastic. Uh, we have two Blessing of Kings. This, when comboed with Avenge, can just can just lead to ludicrous uh, damage. 
from very small minions and you just get super super value so uh, I usually use blessing of kings to just buff something to get rid of something big or something that could be potentially scary sometimes I've got I've gotten to use it as a finisher but not very often but using it to uh, to get more out of my minions uh, is, is really really good putting this on an acolyte of pain could uh, could be pretty funny too uh, we have two consecration seeing a lot of kind of zoo and rush decks at the moment especially sort of between rank 15 and 20 there's lots of them so trying to if you're if you're in that kind of bracket you might want a mulligan for a consecration just to prepare yourself for that incoming onslaught of low health minions we have one piloted shredder uh, I'm still not sure about this but it has the potential to be awesome but it also has the potential to just ruin everyone's day by summoning a doomsayer or something one blessed champion this can be really useful uh, I've not really used it an awful lot uh, and the only times I've felt like I should use it is in cases where it's really not worth spending five mana to get rid of like one or two creatures this is usually used for finishers nice combo with blessing of kings too so you can buff something up with blessing of kings and then double its attack as well and uh, all of a sudden you're hitting stuff very very hard indeed one antique heal bot because you need a little bit of healing we got a little bit from true silver champion but not an awful lot especially as, as i've seen a few warriors using iron juggernaut of late this can be really useful to kind of counter that uh, mine that they give you two sludge belchers because sludge belchers are awesome i think they're in almost every deck that i showcase here they're, they're awesome cards uh, and you should get them if you don't have them already one piloted sky golem so this is like the brother big brother to the piloted shredder again has the potential to be really awesome summoning you a random four cost minion but also has the uh, ability to be terrible so but a six four is, is is probably pretty good stats so it's not too bad we have one Sylvanas Windrunner, because Sylvanas is great getting that mind control. This can also be really useful in combo with the Redemption. So when it dies, it comes back to life with one health, which means you get to take control of another random enemy minion, which is awesome. And then finally, we have Tyrion Fordring. Tyrion Fordring, comboed with a Blessing of Kings, makes him a 10-10. And then if you were to put a Blessed Champion on top of that, that would make him uh, do 20 damage. Just saying, uh, that's a pretty awesome finisher. Same goes with the Pilot of the Sky Golem, actually. Yeah, Pilot of the Sky Golem, Blessing of Kings. Um, you could do that in one turn, making the Pilot of the Sky Golem a 10 8. And then the next turn, you could uh, Blessing of no the Blessed Champion to, uh, to buff it even more. So there's Wait, lots of potential ways to finish off your opponents. The Sky Golem. Sylvanas, Tyrion, all got quite high attack already, so buffing them and making their attack do more is, is going to be fun. I've had a lot of success with this deck so far. I would start off applying early pressure, try and get your low cost minions out, so Mad Scientist, Argent Squire, Shielded Minibots, and your Cog Hammer. Try and get those as early as possible, maybe even Acolyte of Pain. Uh, Aldor Peacekeeper, not so much, but um, they're, they're also really good to try and get fairly early on. Um, but yeah, you, you try and get your mad scientists out as quickly as you can so that you don't have to spend mana on actually playing your secrets. But if you do have your secrets in your hand, then make sure you use them wisely. This has been a great deck. As per usual, if you try this deck out, let me know how you get on. If you make any videos using this deck, feel free to link them to me on Twitter and I'll be sure to check them out. If you have any suggestions for decks that I should be looking at or showcasing, again, feel free to tweet me and I shall take a look at them. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next week for some more Big Deck Player. Thanks again. Bye-bye.